going to do a, a very popular tune called Asa Branca, written by uh, Luis Gonzaga. It's a very, very nostalgic tune, and it really captures the, the mood of the Northeast, the, the hardship that they go through, but at the same time, the, the, the beauty and the nostalgia. Thank you. It's a syncopated rhythm, the, the Sabumba, or the bass drum.
Which of the minor chords are passing one B minor, uh, C minor, F7, and then the fifth note. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, you could just go la la or half loud. If you sing it, it really helps get the tune in your mind. One, two, one. Da 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 triad or you can 
uh, the sixth, which for me is like having read um, what was uh, this, this mm. book I read when I first started learning about music. Uh, and it said that when you add a sixth chord, the sixth is a very nostalgic. It's a very nostalgic. So. Phrase it properly but I don't have my guitar, but the six nine chord is not a major seven and it's not a dominant seven. It's just a very nostalgic chord. Um, it's almost like a major chord that's a minor chord. Oh, because it is it is it is actually uh, the third, I think. Well, the first and third chord comes from the minor. Well, yeah. So uh, you know that's another thing about uh, that you can learn from this tune is how to use the six nine chord and recognize it as an independent thing that isn't a seventh chord or a major seventh. Mm -hmm. It's like a chord that has its own beauty and sort of nostalgia and longing. Uh, it's always talk about saudade in Brazilian music, which is longing. You use that on the like the the turn yes, on the B flat yeah. on the main chord. Would you use that also on the? Some, uh, the other, the no, I just go to the triad. Yeah, right, so just go to the triad. And then, but then when it goes to this, then it becomes like a dominant chord. And what would you, the, the rhythm section, the bass player plays that melody, there's no bass note. Oh, I can, I, it depends who's playing. Right. I, can't, I can't play just this. I, I usually do two chords there um, uh, B flat, major, B flat, triad, and major, and an F minor. to say what the chord is. Uh, it's the tonic chord and it's the fourth chord, chord on four or subdominant if you want to call it that and then the chord on five which is the dominant and then back to one. It reinforces that idea of your one, four, five sequence and then if you're going to play solos then you've got that uh, underneath you as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's slightly more complicated than that, but those chords will do actually. For, yeah, yeah. For this, for in the, in the, yeah. the second bit, I do a one, two, three, four, 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 two, See, see if you can follow my um, my, my my fingers. So okay, we're going to just listen. watch. We're only going to play one, four, and five. One, okay. One, two, three. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs>
promise you that you're going to harmonize the tune by using those chords too.
that's a good lesson uh, for any type of music is to decide when you're going to do a solo because this is often something that I come up against when I'm playing. Is uh, how long is the band going to be? What's the structure? Of, uh, so if we if we decide um, if we decide we're going to have four bars, be very strict about it. After this, after this one, we just play twice. Yeah. slightly different on my instrument to remember where the beginning of your sequence is. Uh, when you're playing something like, uh, you know, you play something like So What, for example, which is like two long sections of D minor, the one of E flat minor, the one of, of yeah. D minor. Then when you go back, I always do something a little bit different on my instrument just to memorize what, where the top was. Yeah. Like, especially when somebody's soloing endlessly. Yeah. Which can happen, you know, always happen, especially if you're a bass player and you're sitting there playing, and there's somebody taking five or six choruses of a solo, and you're you have to back them. So <laughs> not naming any names. Oh, go fetch. Nobody here. Nobody here. Nobody here. But uh, yeah, that's something to remember. And in this case as well. So you come out of this. Counted. Uh, you know, in your hand or something, just to make sure that you know, because the same chord of the beginning is going to be the same chord as the end. That's so to really make sure that you know where the sequence starts. Do something, you know, pinch yourself. You know, that, well, that's going to happen when yeah. you're playing live, professionally. Well, I'm say, when we're running through, what I was trying to do with the chords is give some, for us to play the chord, but that would be a chance for people who's at home to improvise on. Sure. Yeah. Oh, so I see. Yes. Can, okay. we, can we do that twice round? Okay. Yeah. But we always begin, we always try and play. So everybody knows the end of that sequence. Okay. Right. Yeah, on every solo. The ensemble will put in the little bridge. Da, 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 da. The solo doesn't <coughs> need to play that if no. they, what they can choose it to do or not. Solo we know not even the cue. And seeing you three play together reminds me of something else. It's lovely when you stand up to mm. solo. Mm. Really important. One, two, three, four. Mm. 